Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, October 21st. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Gulf of Mexico, and this is the broad mess we were talking about showing up in the southern Gulf uh, toward the end of this week as we had this uh, ex-tropical storm from the eastern Pacific come across, has generated a little bit of a circulation in the Bay of Campeche, and we have a bunch of fluff off to its northeast as well. This is all actually non-tropical forcing that's going on. We have a big jet stream over the Gulf of Mexico and you can see the air moving toward the east northeast here toward the southeast here so you can see it's spreading out away from this area. This is called diffluence and this is allowing a lot of upward motion and clouds and precipitation to form over the southeast Gulf. The only tropical bit is down here in the southern Bay of Campeche. And if you look closely, you'll see low-level winds uh, out of the north here all the way to the coast of Mexico, east of Veracruz. And so that means our circulation or whatever is there is somewhere in here, very tightly packed toward the coast of the southern Bay of Campeche and a little bit of thunderstorms with it. But we have some wind shear coming across as well. You can see the high clouds coming out of the west. So this is having trouble organizing, but we are going to send a recon plane in there this afternoon, or at least it's scheduled to do so. And we'll get a better look at what the wind flow looks in there. Uh, but here's the water vapor imagery, and uh, right now, again, we've got this big trough over the eastern United States, big jet stream over the Gulf of Mexico, so we have a lot of fluff to the north of our little tropical circulation down here. Now, if we look toward the west, we see a little short wave all the way over here in the western United States. I know this is not the best for you to see it, but uh, it's moving over Oregon and into Idaho now, and this short wave is going to round this ridge and dive toward the southeast as this trough leaves toward the east during the next few days. And when that happens, it's going to dive down, and it's going to cause a little bit of a different result than what was forecasted three or four days ago when this shortwave was originally supposed to get all the way down here into the western gulf. And this was going to cause this whole thing to move northeast. But now it's forecasted to come down much farther east and dig into the Florida and southeast U.S. area, and that's going to cause some different things to happen. So let's look at the GFS just as a poster child example, really. There's a ton of models. Um, working at this, but the GFS is a great example. And here's the 500 millibar showing the upper level flow. We see the original big trough, that is this one that's over the southeast right now, by day three, this would be on Friday. On Friday, it's off the east coast. Here's our short wave over Oregon right now, and this comes down behind it. Now again, this is coming down into the Florida and Georgia area, and here's our whole mess down here. If we look at the lower level wind, this is our Bay of Campeche part. This is the non-tropical part that's currently over the southern Gulf. This is quickly coming northeast, and as this short wave comes down, it acts to enhance this. And so it will strengthen as it comes northeast through the Florida Straits and into the Bahamas. And so what we'll get is a secondary low pressure system. This becomes its own entity separate from the tropical bit. And so this comes northeast all by itself. So when we go out to day four, here this is ramping up in the Bahamas. This is non-tropical because if we look at the upper levels, we have this giant shortwave trough coming through here, really amplifying, and uh, the low pressure center is right here underneath the jet stream. So this is non-tropical, but bringing a lot of rain to the Bahamas area. Now note that our tropical part has moved across the Yucatan and is becoming separated from what's going on up here, and it's getting strung out and stuck in the Caribbean. And that's because our shortwave Instead of coming in back here like we originally thought, it's coming in farther east. So now that we see this happening, we know that this might get stuck down here and probably won't be coming out. Now what the GFS eventually does with this is this leaves forever, this remains, and what the GFS does is it eventually develops a tropical storm out of this and moves it into Cuba and eventually Florida on its way out in a week plus time. So far out now, and the Canadian shows the same thing, tropical storm coming into the Gulf. Now, the problem with this forecast from these models is that if you look at the day four and day five forecast, here's the low level flow, here's our tropical piece being left behind, but note that th this flow coming in all the way off the continent from the north, this is ex extraordinarily dry. This is a very dry flow, we're talking about continental air just flooding down into the Northwest Caribbean, and I suspect this would make it very difficult for a piece left behind here 
to develop very quickly. And if any kind of development like what the GFS shows here occurs, it would take many days to occur, which means we would have lots of time to monitor the situation. But I suspect it would be more difficult than the GFS and the Canadian make it seem. I think they make this look too easy, and it would be rather hard to get development here now. One of the keys to development in the Caribbean will be how well this system can get organized in the Bay of Campeche during the next two to three days while it is still over water. If it is very weak when it comes into the Yucatan, by the time it gets out here, there may not be enough of it left to combat the dry air coming from the north. And I think we would need a more organized system here to try to develop in earnest down the road. Now, if this can develop and uh, deepen a lot while it's still over the Bay of Campeche, and again, the recon plane will help with this, to see whether this tries to get going before it moves inland. The H wharf was showing this yesterday. If this develops and comes across the Yucatan as a very well-defined circular circulation, once it comes out over the Caribbean, even despite the dry air coming down, it may have the chance to survive, just survive, for a few days until the conditions become more moist, and then you can have something spinning around that eventually comes north and threatens Cuba or the Yucatan Channel. But this is a little bit of speculation right now. The main point of all this messiness in the Gulf is that we're going to have a lot of rainfall over the next several days. And you can see this whole swath extending from the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico up through South Florida, Cuba, the Bahamas. And again, it's this non-tropical part right here that's causing most of the issues. This is going to be all this rain just swathing this area as these troughs come down and amplify this situation. The tropical part stays all the way down here and it might bring some rain to the Yucatan over the coming days, but most of the rain is the non-tropical part up here. And that's going to be the big issue for the next few days is all of this heavy rain. So there could be some flooding problems, especially in the mountainous areas of Cuba where that is a particular issue. Now, way down the road, when the tropical part comes across the Yucatan, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. But right now, pretty far out, hard to speculate on what could happen. Again, will mainly depend on how organized this can get over the next few days near the Yucatan before it comes out over the Caribbean. And then if it gets stuck down here, maybe in a few days, something may come of it. But that is far down the road right now, and I suspect would be hard to accomplish anyway, given the hostility of the pattern. This time of year in late October, very hard to get the big jet stream out of the Gulf of Mexico. And so anything coming out of the Caribbean is going to have a hard time anyway. It's a pretty hostile pattern here toward the end of the hurricane season. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.